This is Bulgaria, known for its beautiful Black Sea coastline, snowy mountains and thermal springs. Bulgaria also has a rich history. It is the birthplace of Cyrillic script, used in over 50 languages around the world. Its capital, Sofia, stands out with its mix of Byzantine and 19th century European architecture with Ottoman influences, alongside runes of the Roman Empire. With a population of around 6.5 million people, Bulgaria is bordered by Romania in the north, Serbia and North Macedonia to the west, and Greece and Turkey to the south. This strategic location has played a pivotal role in Bulgaria's history, from trade routes to modern-day tourism. To understand how Bulgaria secured its position within the European Union, we must turn back the pages of history by 75 years. Following the conclusion of World War II, pro-Soviet factions within the country, having earlier seized power through a coup d'etat, orchestrated a referendum in 1946. This pivotal vote resulted in the abolition of the monarchy and the creation of the People's Republic of Bulgaria. This new state formed a close alignment with the Soviet Union, which was the beginning of communist rule, characterized by rapid industrialization, collectivization of agriculture and political repression. The fall of the Berlin Wall in 1989 was a pivotal moment, as only a day after the communist leader was removed from power, signaling the start of Bulgaria's shift towards democracy. This paved the way for a multi-party system, a democratic constitution 1991, and the establishment of free elections and human rights. Transitioning to a market economy brought hardships, such as inflation and unemployment. But despite these difficulties, Bulgaria moved towards Western integration, joining NATO in 2004 and then eventually the European Union in 2007. However, Bulgaria is not yet part of the Land Schengen area or the Eurozone. This ongoing delay has led to frustrations among many, who argue that the country has proven its readiness, yet faces barriers due to political maneuvering within the EU. Still, Bulgaria is valued in the EU for its strategic location, acting as a bridge between Europe and Asia. So what about the Bulgarian economy? Well, let's not be diplomatic. Bulgaria is one of the poorest EU member states. In 2022, its gross domestic product was valued at 86 billion euros. The nation's GDP per capita stood at 13,000 euros, positioning it at the bottom of the European Union rankings, below Romania and Poland. This figure is 22,000 euros less than the average GDP per capita across the EU, indicating that Bulgaria has significant ground to make up in terms of economic performance. The EU single market has been very good for Bulgaria though, as intra-EU trade accounts for 66% of Bulgaria's exports, with Germany receiving 16%, Romania 9% and Italy 7%. Outside the EU, Turkey accounts for 6% of exports and China for 3%. When it comes to imports, EU member states contribute to 61% of Bulgaria's imports, with Germany accounting for 12 and both Italy and Romania 7 each. Outside the EU, 7% of imports come from Turkey and 6 from Russia. Due to its economic challenges, Bulgaria is a net receiver of EU funds. For example, in 2021, Bulgaria received 1.7 billion euros more from the EU than it contributed. These funds were used for vital areas like infrastructure, energy efficiency, renewable energy and rural development. A key investment is in the Chirin gas storage expansion, crucial for Bulgaria's energy supply, with the EU contributing 78 million euros to the nearly 300 million euro project, aiming to double its capacity. So what about Bulgarian politics? Bulgaria operates as a parliamentary republic, where the president holds mainly ceremonial duties, such as international representation and signing laws, while the prime minister wields executive power, overseeing policy implementation and government management. Bulgaria's governance revolves around the National Assembly, a unicameral parliament with 240 members elected every four years through proportional representation, ensuring diverse voter preferences are represented. The political scene in Bulgaria has been quite the roller coaster over the past few years, with the country holding five parliamentary elections since 2021. Things started to settle down last summer, with six parties making their way into the parliament, with GERB and We Continue the Change securing the lion's share of seats. 
Nikolai Denkov of We Continue the Change served as Prime Minister for nine months until March the 6th. Under the informal coalition agreement, Maria Gabriel from GERB was supposed to succeed him. However, negotiations failed. Snap elections will have to be called once again, most likely to take place on the 9th of June, next to the European elections. In the meantime, the president appointed Dimitar Glavchev to form a provisional government and act as a provisional prime minister. The previous government prioritized efforts to push Bulgaria towards the EU and NATO, alongside pursuing Bulgaria's integration into the Schengen area and the Eurozone. But political and economic challenges, like the one I just explained, have delayed Bulgaria's adoption of the Euro until the earliest in 2025. On the European level, Bulgaria has allocated 17 seats in the European Parliament, in accordance with its population. Among the 27 countries, Bulgaria ranks 15th in terms of MEPs, with Germany, the most populous, having 96 MEPs, and Malta, the smallest, having 6 MEPs. Five are part of the center-left S&D group, three are part of the centrist liberal Renew Europe group, seven are part of the center-right EPP group, and two have joined the Eurosceptic Conservative ECR group. Notably, no Bulgarian MEPs are associated with the Greens, the Left, or IND groups. Bulgaria also plays a role in the European Commission, the EU's executive branch. Until recently, Maria Gabriel was the Commissioner for Innovation, Research, Culture, Education, and Youth. Among her notable contributions was expanding the Erasmus Plus program and launching the European Innovation Agenda with five key pillars to promote deep tech innovation all across Europe. But as Gabriel returned to national Bulgarian politics, Iliana Ivanova succeeded her. So let's chat about the Bulgarian relationship with the EU. Do the two get along? The Bulgarians are generally positive about the EU. According to recent surveys, 51% of Bulgarian people view the EU in a positive light, while only 19% see it negatively. The rest, 30%, are on the fence, feeling neutral about it. But let's have a more specific look at the good, the bad, and the ugly in the relationship. Starting with the good, since joining the EU, Bulgaria has definitely benefited from access to EU funds, which have been instrumental in infrastructure development, environmental projects, and improving the country's economic health. For example, only last year the EU allocated 183 million euros in building 33 kilometers of motorway connecting Sofia with Serbia. Bulgaria has also experienced a peak in foreign investments in the year of joining the Union and an increased inflow in the years after that. Furthermore, EU membership has opened doors for Bulgarians to work, study and travel freely across member states, enriching both personal and professional lives. However, it's not all rosy. A major source of frustration among Bulgarian citizens stems from the misuse of EU funds. These funds, intended to boost infrastructure and development, often succumb to corruption or are squandered on projects that lack necessity or value. Take for example the Hemos motorway, which was initiated in 1974 to link Sofia with the port city of Varna. To this day, the project hasn't been completed, and there are revelations of 30 million euros being diverted to shell companies and smuggled out of the country in literal bags. Although no EU funds were involved in this, this still highlights the severity of corruption issues. Beyond corruption, EU funds are also allocated to unnecessary causes. Projects like constructing stadiums in nearly deserted villages. Or initiatives that harm Bulgaria's cultural heritage. I mean, these pictures say it all really, with locals referring to these relics of the past as cardboard castles. While not all issues can be directly attributed to EU funding, the presence of these funds is believed to aggravate existing problems. The real pain point, though, has been the stalled conversations around Bulgaria's Schengen Area membership. Despite over a decade in the EU, countries such as the Netherlands and more recently Austria have continuously blocked its Schengen entry, costing the economy around 4 billion euros annually. While Bulgaria has joined the Schengen Air and Sea Zones in April this year, the lack of land membership still costs businesses 200 million euros yearly. This, coupled with the border delays for citizens, fuels feelings of inequality and frustration among Bulgarians. Furthermore, Bulgaria's goal to adopt the euro has also faced delays. 
Once Bulgaria joins the Schengen and Eurozone, its GDP is estimated to grow by 3 to 5%, showing the economic boost that has been missed over the years. This makes us wonder how much better off Bulgaria could have been had it joined these zones earlier. But what do you think of Bulgaria's role in the EU? Let us know in the comments and thank you for our contributors that helped us with the research and script. Finally, the Young European Leadership Organization wants to know what you want to see in Europe's future. If interested, fill out their survey and your ideas might be presented to the Italian government in May this year. More detail in the description. This was the ninth video of our series and if you want to see more of these types of videos, please subscribe to the channel. And if you want to support us further, please consider signing up to Patreon. Until next time.